Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I wanna to talk about the Ryzen 5 2600's biggest weakness, at least from my perspective, and that of course is somebody that does overclock their processors, and that's with the stock cooler that actually comes with the 2600. This is the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which previously was uh, included in the uh, Ryzen 3 parts, as well as I believe the Ryzen 5 1400, and this time around, they're actually packaging, AMD that is, is actually packaging the Stealth Cooler with the 2600 and the Spire Cooler, which used to come with the Ryzen 5 1600, is actually coming with the Ryzen 5 2600X. Now, of course, if we rewind a little bit, one of the big things about Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 5 1600 versus the 1600X as far as a value proposition, one of the big determining factors was actually that the Ryzen 5 1600 came with a Spire Cooler and the 1600X came with with no cooler at all, meaning if you didn't have one laying around that was AM4 compatible, you would have to go out and buy a cooler for the 1600X that just made that price gap between the 1600 and the 1600X that much greater. This time around, at least in my mind, AMD is actually getting the uh, skewing correct here and making the 2600 not just $30 cheaper, but also it comes with a cheaper cooler, which gives you that incentive to go ahead and buy a 2600X. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually fully wish the 2600 came with the Wraith Spire cooler because it would make the 2600 that much easier of a recommendation. In fact, I got this wrong in my last video, suggesting that the 2600 came with a Spire cooler, and that was just my just complete goof there. Uh, it actually comes with the Stealth cooler, making it a little bit harder of a sell unless you already have a cooler that is AM4 compatible that would beat out the Spire cooler, in which case the 2600 is still an easy recommendation because you can still hit about 4100 megahertz. And if you have a really good beefy cooler, even 4150 megahertz seems to be about in the wheelhouse of where a 2600 is. But regardless, it is about time we go ahead and put the stealth cooler that does come with the 2600 to the test to see how far we can push that 2600 with what is ultimately a very low TDP cooler. This thing is not going to uh, get the 2600 nearly to its uh, maximum possible clock speed. The limiting factor with this cooler is going to be thermals and how much voltage you can actually push into that processor before you hit a ridiculously high temperature. So shifting over to just what I could get on this particular cooler, I was able to get the 2600 to 3.95 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. And that came with a very high temperature cost in the mid 90s. Uh, and of course, the Ryzen second generation parts seem to sort of spike and then come back down in temperature constantly. But with my Ryzen 5 chip, it's not really a temperature I would be comfortable running my CPU at, especially if I was doing something that was heavily multi-threaded and did require the processor to ramp up to about 100%. Uh, for an extended period of time, I would actually go ahead and step down the clocks a little bit so that I could get thermals more under control. But if you are just gaming, doing something that's not as heavily threaded and doesn't require the CPU to run at full bore for an extended period of time, then sure, this overclock would probably be just fine and you wouldn't really notice a big difference. The problem of course, is that by itself, if you don't overclock these chips, uh, a couple of the cores are going to ramp up to that 3.9 gigahertz point. So gaming, for example, which rarely takes advantage of more than about four threads, maybe six threads, uh, you're not going to see a big benefit to actually overclocking this processor in game performance. So the takeaway here is actually fairly straightforward. If you are wanting to get the highest clock speed possible and have a cooler that can actually push the 2600 a little bit harder, go ahead and spend the extra $30 on a 2600X because those are higher bin chips. They will likely get a better clock speed. You may be able to hit 4200 megahertz with an aftermarket cooler, plus the Spire cooler is going to be able to get you most of the way there. I'd be very surprised if you couldn't hit something like 4100 megahertz or at least 4050 megahertz with a Wraith Spire cooler paired with a 2600X. If, however, you already own a cooler that is better than both the Wraith Stealth and the Wraith Spire cooler, you may be better served just grabbing the 2600 and saving that extra $30 because the difference between something like 4100 megahertz and 4200 megahertz is going to be about 5%, but you're saving about 14% of the cost by saving that $30 roughly. And I did the math yesterday, so you know my percentage is maybe slightly off. But what I'm getting at here is you are actually on the better side of the price to performance ratio if you can overclock a 2600 to 4100 megahertz with a cooler that you may already have. That 
$30 is better served elsewhere in your system. So that about wraps it up here for the 2600 on the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler. If you have this chip, I don't know that I would really recommend overclocking on the Wraith Stealth. You're just gonna run into very high temperatures and you're not really gonna get that much extra performance out of it before you hit that thermal cap because you just can't push enough voltage to get these chips stable at a higher clock speed, something like 4,050 or 4,100 megahertz. But if you do have a 2600, I am of course very curious what your overclock is. Are you using the stealth cooler that's included in the box or do you have an aftermarket cooler that's AM4 compatible? Maybe you already had one laying around. Let me know what your overclock is and what type of cooler you're using down below. And of course, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.